That is the sound of 50 cc's of awesome. Two stroke awesome from my genuine Rough House 50 sport scooter, a scooter I purchased two years ago. In celebration, I thought I would answer a few questions I've received, like why did I choose Genuine Scooter Company? And why a 50cc? A big question, have I had any problems in two years? And generally, what are my main likes and dislikes after clocking over a thousand miles? I have a full review on this scooter. I'll link that down in the description. The key information to know is this is a 2022 Genuine Scooter Company Rough House 50 Sport. The Sport being the up tier package meaning a few extra tweaks over the regular Rough House 50, like street tires instead of knobbies, and if you talk to salesmen, they'll be quick to point out those street tires give it about an extra one mile per hour. One extra mile per hour is a precious commodity on a 50cc. Let's get right to it with the first question, why I selected Genuine Scooter Company and why the Genuine Rough House 50? Genuine is a dealer brand, not an internet or direct-to-consumer brand. They're also made in Taiwan, not mainland China, and trust me, there's a big difference. A difference that's important when you're competing on the same showroom floors with other big dealer brands like Honda, Yamaha, and Vespa. So anything made by Genuine is going to be a real scooter made with real quality from a proven company, one that I have experience with. I owned a Genuine Stella for years. As a matter of fact, my first two years in college, that Genuine Stella was my main transportation to and from class. So I trust Genuine. I know they can make a good bike. Why the Rough House 50 model though? I mean, it is a 50cc. That has to do with keeping me off of main faster streets. You see, after years and years, actually decades, of riding scooters, I know it's all too easy to be in the mix, zipping around with traffic at 55 or 60 miles per hour if the availability is there. I selected 50 cc's to keep me going the alternate route where at least if there's an accident, I'm barely going faster than I might be going on most e-bikes. And in two years of doing that, I've covered just about every back street in Florence and possibly visited every lemonade stand. My intention was to make a series of scooter vlogs, showing some ride footage and talk about when and where scooters might be better than e-bikes and vice versa. But it turns out that moto vlogs, while way cool in their own way, on a 50cc where I'm going through back neighborhoods and there are lots of stops and starts and low speeds, well, it's fun to ride, but just boring to watch. This is, though, the fastest of the 50 cc's that you can currently buy, and the last of the two strokes, it and its sister, the Buddy, or, or brother, the Buddy? The other scooter that's a two-stroke 50 cc from Genuine, the Buddy. Both the last of the two strokes you can buy new in the United States. I do want to mention the Rough House can edge out the Buddy by a mile per hour or two since it has 12 inch tires versus the Buddy's 10 inch. That was my thinking. Keep with a lower displacement scooter, slower speeds, back neighborhood riding, theoretically safer. And I yearned for that two stroke sound and the lighter, classic, more nimble scooter ride. A lighter, more nimble scooter, way more yeah, forgiving than this heavier scooter that, as you can see, a slight lean and it got away from it. That's not to say I don't periodically yearn for the 125 or 150 life. As a matter of fact, I've probably looked at the Yamaha Zuma 125 quite a few times over the past couple of years and maybe a glimpse or two at the Vespa Sprint 150S. And more, the Genuine Hooligan 170i, the Rattler 200, yeah, I've, I've looked. And for a couple of reasons. While I do love the Rough House 50, I like the two-stroke 50, and it is powerful for a 50cc. I can hit 41, 42 miles per hour on flat ground, more than enough for the back streets in Florence where the speeds are 25 to 35 miles per hour. But there are many, many other streets in Florence that are 40 to 45 miles per hour, and I'd like to ride those. And while 41 can theoretically do it, that's on flat ground at 41, 50 cc's, even a two-stroke 50 will slow down on hills. If you search the internet, you will no doubt see people talk about this scooter and many other 50 cc scooters and claim unreal stuff, just crazy stuff, like 50 miles per hour, 50 plus on this bike. Well, I can tell you the speedometer might say 50, but that's not what it's doing. Speedometers on modern scooters, all of them, are very much overly optimistic by about five to seven miles per hour on average. And a top speed, when it's only the top speed under a very small set of criteria, the perfect circumstances, that's not really a usable top speed. 
My usable top speed on this scooter is 35 to 38. Example, I live in what's called the Quad Cities, which is made up of Florence, Sheffield, Muscle Shoals, and Tuscumbia. I live in Florence. To get to the other three, you have to go across a bridge because there's a river separating the two. I have a lot of self-preservation, so I've never tried to cross this on a four-stroke 50cc scooter. 125, 150, 300, yeah, countless times. I have relatives and scooter riding buddies on the other side of the river, but I don't dare try it on a regular 50cc, and yeah, I'm crossing it here on the rough house, but this, again, isn't a regular 50. It's two-stroke, the fastest you can get, but even then, I mean, I'm barely enough to somewhat keep up with traffic. And this is selectively chosen traffic, early, early morning hours on a weekend morning. And this is the flattest part. My max speed, and I'm maxing out at about 41, 42 miles per hour. If this were any other time of day, there would be a line of cars behind me, and the cars that are passing on the left would be going significantly faster. And that was my top speed. You'll see I hit this hill coming off the bridge, and that top speed starts bleeding down to my regular speeds. Which is why I talk about top speed in terms of sustainable top speed, which again is around 35 to 37 for this scooter, but 50 cc's, a regular four stroke 50, you're lucky if you can get 35, so that's what makes the Rough House special. It also means though that people tend to ride these at full throttle all the time. So people have asked me, how has this held up in two years and over 1200 miles so far flawlessly? I should probably knock on wood here, I hope I'm not jinxing myself, but I haven't had a single problem and I don't anticipate one. It's also fair to note that my scooters, or pretty much anything I own, always has the odds stacked in its favor. I'm a maintenance zealot, I keep up with everything, only use the best parts, components, oils, of course this is two stroke, you only need the two stroke oil, I don't have to do oil changes. And this engine is a proven design. It's been in manufacture for as long as I can remember and used by many different manufacturers. Scooter brands all over the world have used this exact same engine. So it's very, very proven. I don't have any worries about it. But it being a common engine, commonly used across the globe, that means that parts are readily available, which was another big thing. People ask, can you get parts for it? So yeah, I can. And not just the engine, this body design, this is a genuine scooter company roughhouse in the United States. But overseas, it's made by PGO out of Taiwan. It's used in Asia extensively, this exact same body style. So even body parts, easy to get, everything on the scooter, easy to get. Maybe the only thing I would say would probably be somewhat proprietary would be this dash. I don't think this carbon fiber design with the genuine scooter company logo in it, maybe that alone, but everything else, very easy to find. Let's talk about a few likes and dislikes. I'm gonna make dedicated videos on this, especially getting into July and August when it's like 110 degrees plus in Alabama, heat index wise at least. That's when I ride scooters a lot. So going to be doing a series on this very scooter getting into that you know unless I buy a Vespa or something in between now and then aside from it being 100% reliable my corest of the core observations when it comes to likes the one thing that jumps out at me that I think is worthy of sharing is the sizing and that's a biggie most modern scooters they're either a very small frame or a tad big I like the nimbleness of a small frame scooter the problem is I'm 5 foot 10 inches tall and if you're an average sized American and you've ever looked at scooters, you'll know that many of them were just a bit too short. The ridge on the seat's always right where you needed to sit, not the forward where it wanted you to sit. The Rough House, it's a perfect in-between. It has the wheelbase of a smallish frame scooter, but the rider comfort of a large frame, that's thanks to the forward footrest and the seat design, specifically the seat design on this sport model of the Rough House 50 making it a perfect fit for me. Now you just saw that bump, and that's getting to my two core dislikes. The first of which is the rear shock. Now this sport model, it has a fancy shock, that coil over with the billet reservoir, and it's supposed to be adjustable. Well, it is adjustable, but I've never been able to dial it in to be as smooth as I think it should be over rough bumps. As a matter of fact, I kind of wish for the sport model they would have ditched the billet reservoir single, and gone with dual shocks at the rear. Now it's not anything that would steer me away from the bike. I'm just saying the sport model, you're paying more, you're getting something fancy looking. I think it should ride a lot better than it does, at least compared to the standard model. Roughly the same performance, in my opinion, it just looks cooler. 
And the looks, that gets me to the second thing. This matte paint finish, gorgeous, but stickers on the matte finish, they never stick quite well. And I regularly have to go through and you can see, press them back down. I don't know if they need better adhesive or what. It's the first genuine I've seen that does this. And I think it is, again, this matte paint with adhesive dome stickers that just don't stick all that well. And that's where I'm gonna stop here because again, I wanna make videos, multiple of them, the pros of the Rough House 50, the cons of the Rough House 50, and then some comparisons between it and e-bikes. 50cc scooters and e-bikes, there's some overlap there. And maybe even talk about electric scooters, Genuine sells the new brand, and why I didn't buy one of those and bought this instead. I'll cover all that coming up soon. Again, August-ish time frame, fighting that heat, riding the scooter life. And that's my rough house, scooter life so far. Comment below with what you think, and if you have any other comparisons or questions, anything you want answered about this, or scooters in general, I owned a scooter sales company at one point. I'm deeply ingrained in scooter culture, so ask away. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I hope you're subscribed. Thank you for watching Kev Central, and have a great day.